Well, at the end of the last video, I said that I'd never used any of the etching chemicals available for cleaning out your fuel tank. And I didn't even think about this evapor rust I have laying around. The evapor rust talks about doing fuel tanks right on the label. So I'm going to fill it all the way up. But instead of leaving it sit for a couple hours, like it says in the instructions, I'm going to leave it sit overnight. Okay, it's the next day. I'm going to dump this out of here. And then I'm going to rinse it out with water. This is a detailing brush. I cut the plastic handle off and drilled a hole in it and epoxied a stiff wire in there. And then I have a bendable handle on my brush so I can get to hard to reach places. Next I'm going to dry it out with compressed air as much as I can and then leave it sit in the sun for a bit. Well here's what it looks like inside. It does look better than it did. But I expected it to remove the rusty color. Now here's another shot of the same area in the back and it looks a lot better. So I don't know how much of that dark coloring is due to my lighting. I had a comment on my last video from Wild Horses. And he suggested that I use red coat for metal gas tanks. Well I'd never heard of that. So I did a little research and of course watched a YouTube video about it. That was done by Terrell Fixes All. So I ordered some from a local parts store so I could try it.
on this fuel tank the filler neck protrudes down into the tank maybe about a quarter inch so when you turn it upside down to drain stuff out there's still a quarter inch left in there so I'm going to take the drain plug out of the bottom get as much out as I can I'm going to start working on the engine next. First I'm going to drain the oil. The cap is stuck on there pretty good, so it looks like the pipe's coming out with it. I'll fix that before I put it back in. I got this steel bar under the block so the oil drains out the other end. Well, it's the next day, so this red coat fuel tank liner has had overnight to dry. They say it's dry when it doesn't put off an odor anymore. So I blew it out with compressed air and let it sit for a while. And there's no odor to it. So I'm going to put a second coat on. Well, there's mouse nest material under the flywheel cover here. And the choke and the throttle are locked up on the carburetor. So I'm going to start taking things apart. This bolt's not wanting to come out, so I'm going to have to wiggle it back and forth for a while.
this one here don't feel too good either. So I'm going to wiggle it back and forth for a while. Well, that didn't work. I ended up breaking the ear off of the casting. But I'm going to keep going. Got to get in here and see what's happening. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in here. And mouse pee is a lot worse than water when it comes to corrosion and stuff. This must have been stripped here. Somebody fixed it by putting a bolt in it. I'm going to have to cut that bolt to get these apart. This has got the bottom rusted out of it. Well, I need to get under this flywheel. I need to clean out these holes, but before you run the tap through there, you need to know what's behind it. The coil on this type of engine is in the upper right area, so I'm rotating the flywheel so the tap goes through at the lower left area. Well, that was pretty easy. Didn't even have to use a hammer. This flywheel looks pretty good. You got to look for cracks in the hub area, and they usually start in the corner of the key slot. All right, everybody get your safety glasses on. Well, my second coat of the fuel tank liner has been sitting around for about a day. This one didn't turn out as good as the first coat, but it's all because of operator error. You can see that big thick line that runs the length of the one side there. And that's because I had the bright idea of tipping the fuel tank back and forth to spread the thick stuff across the bottom. But I left it sit too long, 
leaning that one direction because I had to go eat a pizza and of course when I got back it was dried out too much to flow out the rest of the way so don't do that that thick area is still a little soft yet so I'll have to let that dry longer and see how that turns out alright back to the engine I'm gonna take all these governor parts off and I'll go through how I adjust it when I put it back together that governor shaft don't come out so I put this bushing back in place to hold it in position while I'm cleaning it sometimes there's a little washer on this shaft so you don't want to lose that I'm probably going to reuse this part just want to take it off and clean it this stuff looks pretty well intact I'm gonna test it and see if I can get it to spark before I take stuff apart this little washer here needs to be behind the flywheel don't lose that I'm going to see if this magnet comes off of the crankshaft easily. Well, it's not coming off very easy, so it's going to stay there for now. I'm only going to degrease the bottom part of the block because the top part's already dry enough to run the wire brush on. I'm going to take the points off next. I'm taking the mounting bracket and the points off together. And then you can pull your push rod out. I need to take this wire loose so I can use the wire brush around there this gasket looks like it's still usable
But apparently I missed the spot when I degreased the block, so I gotta do that over. Looking at the head here, you can see that one in the corner has been drilled out for an oversized bolt. On this engine, I'm going to try to get it running without taking the head off. Alright, that's as far as I'm going this time, and here's what it looks like. Next time I'll get the flywheel on there and see if I can get it to spark. Alright, that's it.